hydrology, especially today, has, is pretty broad. It has to do with anything to do with water, really. Um, I tended to focus on groundwater, which is the water that goes on the ground. But I also work with everything from how rain forms, how it impacts the trees, how it, trees take it up, how the ground takes it up, how the rivers take it up, its pathway from the mountains to the ocean in its different forms, whether it's streams or underground, um, evaporation in its different states, how much discharge into the ocean, how that affects the marine environment, and focus very much on Hawaiian use of water in Lo'i um, by fish ponds, how the mix of water affects, us, affects species near the ocean is something I'm recently getting very interested in. Um, how things have changed over time is something I'm interested in. How changes in vegetation and plant life affect how the water that falls as rain is given to the streams or to the groundwater differently when native versus non-native plants. Like I said, our work is starting to bridge the gap between the kind of compartmentalization of environmental sciences at the university between the biology department, even within biology, botany, zoology, um, Hawaiian studies people doing very environmentally malama oriented stuff, but not so strong in a science. That's why they're reaching out for this program also. So I think the cutting edge is, actually we're going full circle back to the way the Hawaiian looked at it. We have to look at the whole system in a holistic way and using the tools modern science has given us. And I think that's Ironically, the cutting edge is going back to looking at the way things interact. You cannot just measure how a plant uptakes water, um, transpiration, evaporation, and, and minus rainfall or whatever, and get a water budget. Because the soil is this huge storage down there that hydrologists study more of, and it's it's main it has sort of a dynamic interaction and feedbacks with the trees. If you don't have enough soil moisture, it can affect the life of the tree. You can even kill a tree if there's not enough but and vice versa, the trees taken out affects the soil moisture, which affects how much goes into the groundwater, which can affect the stream, which can affect the fish pond. So I think a lot of the research now that I'm getting interested in are very, is, it's not pure hydrology, it's, it's, it's water and it's different forms interacting with plants, with, with lo'i, with fish ponds, with um, the whole system, looking at pieces of that. So this is the dirty water, and you can see, you know, coming out of the septic tank, it still has a lot of uh, suspended solids. Uh, what we're doing here is we're aerating it. We're, we're changing the ecology from the septic tank, which is an anaerobic system, to an, an aerated or an aerobic ecology. And that's the bacteria that process these nutrients. Uh, this is sweet potato, and these are the roots. Already you can see the water quality is a lot better than those first tanks. And uh, th these are the roots where you, you would have that attached growth. Uh, and this is where the magic happens, right in here. This is a, this is a dissolved oxygen meter. It, it um, measures how much available oxygen there is in the water for the organisms that live in this water. The dirtier water at the end has less oxygen available. And as we get further down the line toward the cleaner water, the dissolved oxygen increases to almost natural levels just slightly less than what I measured in the stream a couple minutes ago. Okay, basically this biofilm lesson, what we did was we installed the uh, biofilm disc like this and the bacteria colonized it and then you get other things like barnacles, crustaceans, worms, uh, and eventually even coral will colonize these things. The idea is then you can slip it off and put it in your disc and look in under these stereoscopes. This tunnel goes in for 1,500 feet, the length of five football fields. We're going to walk 1,500 feet. At 1,500 feet, we're going to come to a steel and concrete bulkhead. Basically, right now, in your mind's eye, just think of a safe uh, in the bank, okay? one of those vaults. Okay? Uh, we're going to reach that steel and concrete bulkhead. But just know behind that bulkhead, we actually continue to dig the tunnel for 200 feet more. Yeah? But where that steel, uh, where that bulkhead is, 
is where we broke through into the compartment. And we were able to put a wall and a door back in its place so that we could keep the storage of the water okay, behind that wall. Okay, um, we're going to be walking in an inch or two of water the entire length of way. Uh, you can actually track how far you are going on the right hand side of the wall. Every 50 feet there's markings that will tell you how far we're going. Uh, when we get to the back, we're going to see the dry bulkhead first. You can have a chance, you'll have a chance to actually go up to the door uh, and see up close. And then we're going to take you to a second tunnel. And at the second tunnel, the water is going to come through the ceiling. We give you a cup, you help yourself to a drink of water.